Maybe I'll do a part two of this video. But that's only if we can get this to 50 likes. Well, it got 62 likes, so here is your part two. Number six of why Great Lakes vessels are so much more unique than ocean-going vessels. The 1950s, when the shipyards were at their full capacity, and taconite was starting to be used. Of course, it wasn't discovered in the 1950s, but it had previously been known as waste material because it had low iron content. But taconite plants changed that all. What they did was they crushed the taconite into powder. Then they separated magnetite, which was in the taconite with magnets. They mixed it with clay and they rolled them into the marble-sized pellets we know today. But you may ask, why is it on this list? Well, it was found out in Minnesota that this was useful which means that it was first used on the Great Lakes. So, you can thank the Great Lakes for taconite pellets. Number 7. So for this one, we're going back to the 1950s again, because like I said, the shipyards were full, which means that shipping companies were looking for faster and cheaper alternatives to get vessels for their fleets. So the Cleveland Cliffs Steamship Company came up with an idea. They converted an ocean-going vessel into a Great Lakes vessel. They determined that the Notre Dame Victory would be the best candidate for that. So, they turned it into the Cliffs Victory, and that became one of the most unique and well-known vessels on the Great Lakes. The reason this vessel is considered so unique is because it has both its superstructure and its engine located in the middle. Of course, it had the bow superstructure, but... The fact that the other superstructure, which normally would be in the back, was in the middle, was a very unique look on the Great Lakes. So because of the example set by Cleveland Cliffs, other vessels were converted. Number 8. In 1973, Cleveland faced a problem. The Cuyahoga River is a small winding river which leads up to mills. And these mills needed iron ore and taconite, but many small vessels that were able to reach these mills were being scrapped, which meant that specially designed river class vessels were built. These vessels overall dimensions were 630 feet long, 70 feet wide, and 40 feet deep, because there's little room to maneuver in the Cuyahoga River. One of these vessels was the Great Republic which was built in 1981 as the American Republic by Bay Shipbuilding Company and was managed by American Steamship Company. Currently, it is managed by the Great Lakes Fleet. The vessel measures 634 feet in length, 68 feet in width, and 40 feet in depth, and has two pitch propellers. Each propeller has four rudders, two behind and two in front. The ship is also equipped with bow and stern thrusters, which each produce 1,000 horsepower. Because the ship would be backing up a lot, its pilot house was located as far back as it possibly could be, so that there was a view of the front of the vessel and the back of the vessel to aid in maneuverability. The vessel also had two captains, so one of them could always be on duty. Number 9. In the 1930s, World War II broke out. And in 1941, the U.S. was thrown into the war. But what you may not know is how the Great Lakes aided in the war. Because of the war, ships, planes, tanks, and small arms were necessary. So, Great Lakes vessels were built to haul iron ore to steel mills, which uh, obviously makes steel, which was then used to make all these war weapons and ships and planes and tanks. So you can thank the Great Lakes for that, because they had a big impact on the war. Number 10. Gales. Gales are just strong storms. But on the Great Lakes, they're different. On the ocean, you get bigger waves, but normally they come from one direction. Because the Great Lakes are smaller in size, the waves in these storms can bounce off the shores and come at you from all directions when you're sailing in the storms. You get you get seas from literally all different directions. That 
that's just like stressful. On the ocean, you just have to worry about normally one direction, but on the Great Lakes, it's everywhere. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe. Just please do it.